hi everybody and welcome back to Impy, your friendly cat Moran. So those of you who follow our travels will know that we are a couple sailing around the world having left South Africa some years ago now. Folks ask if we are sailing as part of a rally group or in teams of other yachts and whilst this may have its benefits, we intend to sail at our own pace and speed, so no, we are lone range sailors. <laughs> so the time had come to leave beautiful New Zealand. You'll remember from our previous video in New Zealand how we were waiting and watching for a perfect weather window opportunity to depart for the same amazing country we had left behind while seeking shelter during cyclone season, none other than New Caledonia. But before we get to New Caledonia, we have to consider what can be a tough sail on account of weather departing New Zealand. Now you may recall that we had been uh, watching weather groups and with one harsh system following the next, contacted immigration to discuss our visa extensions should we not be able to leave on okay, time. Okay, now it's, it's um, we're actually ready to leave, but we're just not sure about the weather. In about two weeks we've been watching it, you know, and we've been, well, I've got all the group files downloaded that actually show there's no ways we could have gone. Some yachts actually did leave. And Opua Marina told us this morning they've returned uh, with damage and it's, it's wild out there. So we just thought, well, let's talk to immigration. We don't want to be on the wrong side of you guys. If, you were, if you're saying that you can only find out one week in advance, at the start of that week, if you put through that application, okay. that would be, I think that would be, that would be fine. Uh, okay. Five days is the processing time frame for the application itself. But as long as you have the application on the system, we can issue, with, issue you with an interim visa awaiting the decision of the application. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what I want you to know. Because so a few things we are looking at for our passage from New Zealand to New Caledonia. First, the region sits fairly low in our globe, and the further south, the more tricky weather can become. From our earlier video, in leaving New Caledonia for New Zealand, you'll remember that weather systems generally move from west to east. Now these systems we keep an eye on consist of high and low pressure groups, and in the southern hemisphere, high pressure systems rotate counterclockwise, whilst low pressure systems rotate clockwise. As mentioned before, not only do these systems rotate, but they also move from west to east. Now of course when one is this far south and with one weather system following on to the next, one wants to cross the ocean as quickly as possible. And generally that is what we refer to as following the rum line. I won't go into currents and the curvature of the earth and how they play a role right now. Now our route extends northwest crossing the path of these systems and one needs to choose the appropriate weather passage for an enjoyable safe crossing. Since we are headed northwest, 330 degrees approximately, and wanting winds predominantly from the midship to aft quarter of the boat, it stands to reason that we want to sail on winds ranging anywhere from the southwest through southeast to northeast position, and preferably out of the southeast as this places the winds astern. Depending on the latitude systems run along, one can see on high pressure system that winds ahead of the high pressure center tend to be in the correct direction for a passage to New Caledonia. Now, low pressure systems moving along a latitude that intersects our passage to New Caledonia has the opposite effect, in that the winds ahead of the system move from a northerly direction, and one would be sailing into the wind. Now, of course, a low pressure system that is past New Zealand will see winds from the south again, which would be good for a passage to New Caledonia. At any rate, whether high or low, one needs to look at the sea state as well, that is the height and period of waves before choosing to depart. So pressure systems move from west to east, some are faster moving than others. Some systems may hold back the movement of a faster system. This contest between the systems can cause a squash effect, where the isobars are squeezed or compressed. This is not an area one wants to be in. So whilst we have internet at the beginning of the journey, 
there are many sources for determining weather and generally we scour through as many as possible to gain a better understanding of what it is we will be dealing with out there. Well, here we are looking at Windity. Some pronounce it differently, that's how we pronounce it, Windity. And this site provides a terrific overview of weather conditions. Right, so here is New Zealand and our rum line across to New Caledonia. To the east of New Zealand we see a low system and since weather moves west to east it has passed New Zealand and the southeasterly winds would be great for a departure. However, the sea state is menacing. It's just awful. Yachts have returned with damage and we need to wait a few days for the seas to calm down. But we need to look to the west for what is due to arrive. Hoping for a nice high pressure system, we, we can see here that actually there is a massive low pressure system approaching and we wonder if we could get a gap to beat the system once the seas calm down a bit. We so wish we could jump onto this weak high pressure system. One can see here that we have a high pressure ridge extending northwards. So the winds to the east of this ridge are out of the easterly sector, like southeast. But of course, as it passes overhead, moving from west to east, the winds will switch out of the north, say northeast, and that would mean, you know, wind ahead of midship, which in rough seas can be very uncomfortable. The other concern is this huge low growing in size with a slow moving low to the east, which is now squeezing the high pressure system. And we need to keep an eye where these two interface, since the isobars could tighten up radically. And this certainly is not good, especially in a low pressure system. Now with the west to east movement together with the predicted low system front moving not only east, but also to the northeast, these are not ideal conditions for a departure. However, with the system skirting along 30 south before dropping to the south again, we see a gap if we can beat the system by arriving at 30 degrees south before it does. So with terrible sea state conditions holding us back in New Zealand, we fear taking a direct or a rum line route will take longer to get north to the 30 degrees south latitude. And it also puts us on a path to meet the approaching system sooner. So we look at a plan to head north, perhaps slightly northeast, and curve around the top of the approaching system. Now, whilst indications are such that the winds will not be as aggressive as one thinks, the problem lies in the wave forecasts, which are predicted to be over 5 meters in confused seas being washed out of the system to the north of 30 south. So we may be going off to um, check out some weather with some other yachties, right? And it's, it's raining outside, so, you know, foul weather gear time. And uh, haven't worn these in a long time. But here in New Zealand, sorry guys, beautiful country. <laughs> but here in New Zealand, <laughs> you guys are making me wear my foul weather gear, man. Yeah, we're going to take quite a wild dinghy ride all the way up to go and uh, discuss weather with some other yachties who are thinking of leaving. Um, it's quite tricky as to whether we have a calm weather passage or not. So we'll have to go and see. We want to talk to everybody. We're sharing information. And um, that's the way we do it, man. Okay, we do not want to bore you guys with weather. But let me just say that Anna and I are sailors. We have a huge respect for the power of the ocean. We do a lot of research on weather before leaving. And part of this is to consult others oh, also yeah. looking to leave. Sometimes we will dinghy across bays in rain and wind to meet fellow cruisers and share weather information. So here in New Zealand we also decided to meet a fellow cruiser called Jan. Jan is French and we met Jan and Valerie and their family when they docked alongside us in Panama on their catamaran called Apalusa. Jan had been doing the storm dance to prevent Impey from leaving until their holiday here in the Bay of Islands. Well his storm dancing antics were working and so we visited them hoping he would withdraw the ritual. Very nice little house. Hey Valerie, 
I'm capturing you on TV now. These are our friends, our French friends who are now New Zealanders. Check them out, man. What a nice family, hey? Yeah, this amazing couple have uprooted themselves from France, purchased a South African built catamaran, and sailed across the oceans, having immigrated to New Zealand now. And here they are building a new home, the kids attend school here, and when we met them earlier on, Jan said he could not speak much English, and it really surprised me how well they could all speak the language now. So awesome seeing these guys again, and over a chat and cup of coffee, Jan agreed to terminate his storm dance, so we could now leave for New Caledonia. <laughs> storm dance out of the way. Now we continue to focus on weather again. Every morning except Sundays, an amazing couple, who themselves are world cruisers, decided to broadcast weather for yachties free of charge. These folks really dazzled us with their gift of time. It, it really can't be easy to be broadcasting every morning at the crack of dawn, and I would really encourage folks to make a contribution to them, even if small. I know they would appreciate it, and it is an amazing service that they provide toward passage planning. I know pretty much 95% cloud cover here, and it is cool. 11 degrees centigrade, but we're not complaining because over the weekend we were in Taupo and it was very cold down there. We just don't know what cold is like up here. Uh, is yeah, so Patricia Friday. does a stint before David, um, you know, being in contact via the SSB, which is single sideband radio, passing on weather information and news from other sailors throughout the islands. All right, let's see if we've got any reports from the islands. This is Gulf Harbour Radio. Good morning, all, and we're listening. Good morning, Jonathan, from Vanua Balavu. Shainu, go ahead. Yeah, Patricia does a great job, and following this, David comes on air with the really technical stuff regarding ocean passages and conditions one will be likely to encounter. Quite a bit of a squash area uh, from New Zealand uh, all the way up to uh, 30 and the date line. That's pretty rough up there for the boats that want to leave uh, today. I don't think you really want to do that. Uh, we're going to find southeast winds up to 40 knots. That's a four, four zero. To the east of Cape Rianga uh, are 45 knots. That's four, five knots. So uh, that is not good. Uh, uh, Thursday is going to bring the next front. And that's going to be preceded by northwest winds. And they'll be about 30 knots. And then they're going to shift to the southwest and that will be about 25 knots, and boy, that will be cold. Uh, the swell right near New Zealand uh, will start to drop uh, because of the wind uh, direction, but while the height uh, drops, uh, I think you could imagine that you've had a couple of days of 40 knots out of the southeast, and suddenly we get a northwest 30, uh, what the condition of the sea is going to look like. Uh, I have a feeling you feel like you were in a washing machine, even though they aren't going to be big waves. So, for those of you that are intent on leaving the New Cal or Vanuatu, I would say Tuesday uh, would be about the only day you could do it. And then you've got your front uh, on Thursday, and that's going to be a bit of a problem from New Zealand to 30 South. Um, Northwest winds, pretty much uh, 25 knots on the nose. And so if you don't want to deal with the uh, few seas in a fairly sporty ride uh, northward, uh, you may want to wait a little bit longer. I guess it was a little bit longer you waited. <laughs> yeah, I feel sorry for you, Alex. So. Anyway, around 30 south, uh, we're looking at northwest winds as well. Uh, in the neighborhood of 20 knots to 25 knots. And that being the funnel boundary right in there, if you have the bad luck to be in a squall, uh, that's an automatic 30 to 35, almost in all cases. And I'm seeing winds there of uh, up to 40 knots. So something's cooking. Uh, I don't know why yet. Probably a polar dip in the works, and that may spawn a low. Uh, so that's your trip if you decide to go tomorrow. Uh, Right, so David and Patricia are truly amazing people. 
I actually use their broadcast to determine my own assessment of weather, and believe me, one really learns a lot through this. And of course chatting about weather to other sailors. Here is Mark. You may remember Mark and Sue from Makushla, who we first met in Cuba and recently visited us in Impi. Well, here we are discussing weather with him too. Yeah, the Australian site is brilliant. It's really yeah. a, it's a very nice site. Because There's a monster that thing developing in the Tasman. Yeah. What are you looking at now? Surface wind. Surface wind, yeah. Let's call it 2025 and, and off the Cape there you might hit uh, 25 to 30. Right. But that's fine, you know, um, if you reefed well. The problem is that big monster system that you refer to underneath there is starting to catch up and that thing is, is somehow being uh, coerced by the 500 hectare pascal layer. Yeah, and if that treads further north, that predicted. That's the worry, because then you, we can't clear that in time. No. It does show that it dissipates. Yeah, it shows that yeah, you should slide beneath you, shouldn't they? They should slide under us, you know, but that, that's that's the thing. It's right in the needle, right though. <laughs> We're sitting on the edge. What what I'm not liking is if you look at Wednesday, 2200 hours, and you look at the surface wind uh, band, uh, against Australian east coast at 30 south, running down towards New Zealand, there's a very strong line there. And that seems to be the band that this guy's worrying about. Right. Yeah. It's being influenced, it's being held back basically, he's saying. Something's holding that whole system back. And the isobars squeeze up, they tighten up there, in, in the upper yeah. layers. And I think he's worried that it breaks through, you know, into the lower layers. So, so what's he saying at this point? I mean, you know, we've been talking to a number of uh, sailors, uh, even these guys at Galaxy say so they've been talking to a lot of uh, really good weather people. And because of the El Nino now switched into a Lone Nino, they're saying the conditions are something that they haven't witnessed in many years. And, right. and the weather's just all over the place, and uh, so people are, are not really sure at the moment. So guys are just gunning it, you know, they're going for it. And, and then you get that, uh, you know, that boat that, kicked, that had that mishap coming down and took damage. And people today were telling me they actually were in 74 knots of wind. Well, that, yes. That, well, I don't know whether that was caused by one of these bombs or not. Well, that's the thing, eh? It could, it could be what happened in the upper layers. Apparently, the, 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 the racing yachts actually took even worse weather a few days before this boat um, took on what it took on. So, it, it must have been really mean out there for those race boats. Yeah, yeah they were there out there at um, ski goals. <laughs> ski goals? I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, football is ski goals. I mean, that's incredible. We were like that in yeah. the dinghy today, though. Yeah, Anna says we were like that in the dinghy today, ski goggles and all. <laughs> so, yeah, many weather groups and discussions later, Anna feels we should make a break for it, sail hard and race the system to beat it at 30 south. Well, I was struggling a bit. I think I had some bug and was not feeling very well for the first two or three days. Fortunately, Anna was in good spirit. She had a hugely positive attitude assisting me with medicines, helping me recover whilst trying to keep up the speed to reach 30 south before the weather front. It looks like we're going to Fiji, not to New Caledonia. It looks like we're off to Fiji. In, in red are the actual tracks MP placed as she sailed the Big Blue. And leaving New Zealand, we take a course directly to the north. We then head northeast to take advantage of wind and speed and to place ourselves further from the approaching front. The forecast for waves here is also less. Yellow marks a spot we have to beat before the front at 30 south. In fact, we sail hard and beat the mark up to the black line here. We can see all different types of cloud patterns here. And the sea is getting a bit confused. And 
Well, if this is not enough for us to cope with, we run straight into a massive fishing fleet who display their position on AIS at the last possible moment. Our concern here always is their fishing gear, as some vessels trail miles of line. None respond to our VHF calls, so we have to divert and sail miles around these vessels. Oh man, lost distance and lost time. So we've had fishing vessels all over the show. They've actually now just put off their AISs, but we've sailed into a fleet of fishing boats. There's one on the radar there. There's another one up here. There's one there. Man, we've just sailed right into a fleet of, um, of fishing vessels. It's incredible. Almost midnight here and uh, yeah, we're having to work this out because we have to alter course for fishing vessels. Ordinarily sailing vessels have the right of way. This one has stopped now. And uh, there, there this one has now s virtually slowed down and stopped because we were on a collision course and, and we just don't know, you know what more to do. We're in, we're in a fleet, we've been altering, altering, altering. And um, yeah, so we're just holding course here at the moment. Uh, there was another one that popped up there. You don't see him right now. I can see him. Anna sees him. Yeah, there's a whole fleet of these guys here, and they pop. They just put the AIS on basically when uh, you're gonna collide with them. So at the last minute, you see them. It's incredible. So, dodging fishing fleets and working hard at reaching 30 south before the approaching weather system, which hopefully will slide below us at that point, we continuously download weather at sea. We often get the question from folks as to how we retrieve weather at sea. There are many ways of doing this, including some excellent programs one subscribes to such as PredictWind. However, we still like to crunch through this ourselves as this way we feel that through the effort of working things out for ourselves we have a better understanding of the weather and are more in tune with it compared to our surrounding environment. Ok, so we use a satellite phone connected to our laptop and I use a free to use program called Airmail 3. We now go ahead and select an area where we want to see weather data. So once selected the bottom left of the screen we can select the model we want. Here I have GFS and I hit the request button. So this function pops up a menu which shows all the parameters and or settings we wish to have displayed in a file to be sent back to us. So here I'm setting the hourly spacing. Do I want to see groups valid for 3 hours daily, 6 hours, 24 hours, how many days and so on. Remember satellite calls are not cheap so the less data the smaller and quicker the file sends and receives. On the other hand not enough data in aggressive weather systems is not going to help one much either. Now at the top right window we can set parameters. These are mean sea level pressure, wind, upper level winds at 500 hectopascals, surface temperatures on the sea, upper level temperatures, waves, rain and so forth. Now upper level weather systems are important as they are steering systems for what happens at the surface. But we don't have enough time for all that now. But it's worth keeping that in one's mind. To the upper left uh, part of the window we see the grip boundary which is automatically set as we pull the corners of the blue area selection square. These will be the parameters entered into the email to be sent. The lower left side of the window sets the grid spacing for data. The smaller the grid, the more data per area to be displayed if I can put it that way. And presto, we are now ready to send the information to our email outbox. So here we click on the email tab which takes us to the email outbox. I saved a number of files here, they are all covering the same area. We can add text characters onto this command for additional information using a comma. For example, wave direction would be in caps WVDIR. Since I'm emailing this by satellite phone and not through our SSB radio for which ML3 is set up, I will copy the text for now and close ML3. I now am ready to send this email using my satellite email service. Currently on the New Zealand Iridium SIM card, we use the provider Onsat Mail. Right, new message selected. Email address is query at saledocs.com. Again, a free to use service. The subject, request docs or other text. And in the text body, we simply paste our prepared email. Phew, 
Time to send and place this call. Folks, I realize this video is not going to appeal to everybody, but I have been asked to share this so often now. I should go ahead and just get it done. There are a huge number of different, more modern and easier ways to do this. I'm showing this method, uh, you know, kind of like, I like to be in a position to grab my set phone in an emergency and jump into the life raft with it. I can't go into all the options available in this video, but an understanding of things at this level will set the basis of knowledge for other easier to use systems. Now at this point waiting a minute or two and then hitting the call button again will actually place a call which receives email and in that email you will receive the grip. Now the received weather grip will be saved at a location you choose on your computer for retrieval by the next program or multiple programs that you choose to use to display the data. So we like to use a free to use program called ZYGRIB. One imports the GRIB file, that's easy. File open and clicking on the GRIB where you saved it. This file will open as a picture styled data and ZYGRIB will make it easy to see at a glance what the weather is doing as one slides through the day tabs at the bottom of the screen. Wherever one places the cursor, there is a readout to the left side of the screen providing wind strength, sea state and any other parameter you asked for. We place markers along the run line and other possible routes which are estimates of mileage achieved per day and this way by placing the crosshair or the cursor here together with the relevant day and time tab we know what the forecast is for that particular location. Now one can request moving forecasts but I will keep it simple for this particular video. Okay back to sailing for a while. An interesting part of sailing through weather systems is that they really do bring on a variety of settings. We see such diversity in clouds and sunsets with changing weather. It's kind of eerie but beautiful all at the same time. Yeah, and whilst we achieve our target by passing 30 degrees south, this low pressure system is reaching out to suck us in, man. We reef in hard, the mainsail is ready to be drawn in even tighter, hatches are battened down, and we are prepared as we realize the front is going to pass overhead. Now the awesome thing about rain, as much as sailors generally don't want it around, is that it breaks the surface tension of the ocean and this reduces the amount of breaking waves and one sees far less white capping. So we are reefed in all the way, on both the Genoa and the mainsail. We keep MP moving at slow but comfortable pace as the system howls through us. We are always happy with ourselves in these conditions, that we, that, you know, that we are well prepared ahead of time. becomes quite tiring, even for two sailors, trying to get rest over four hour shifts each when all is banging and clanging in the ocean. You know, my mind goes back to those single-handed sailors, 
the lonely riders of the storms. And I think of the sailor's rhyme, with a low and falling glass, soundly sleeps a careless ass. Only when tis high and rising, soundly sleeps a careful wise one.
Hey, Bambino, we're arriving. Uh, what was that? I'm not speaking French, sir. Onetta Rive. Okay, so um, we've arrived. We've arrived at New Caledonia, man. Uh, we can actually see the waves breaking against the back of the reef. It's going to be very difficult to get on the GoPro. Uh, but we can see Amadi Lighthouse. Uh, Amadi Lighthouse here, you know. Ah oui, j'aime ou la pain au chocolat. Ah, j'aime la pain au chocolat. Ah, j'aime la pain au chocolat. Merci beaucoup, Anna.